You ever think about how you're going to end up in a place like this? A place like this with all these other assholes. Without this fucking piece of paper. This piece of paper, the Federal Reserve or the IRS call money. You could end up like one of these guys right here. In the face of no food, no shelter. Well, you starve. You end up on the street. Nothing to eat. And then you starve to death. You end up in a place exactly like this. You know, when you start having to work for a living, these thoughts become a lot more pertinent because I can conceptually say that if you don't work, you don't eat. But it doesn't really hit until you have to work in order to eat. Your criticism becomes all the more real of such a system. Now, a lot of my viewers come from a place with a fairly robust social safety net. Even third world countries, compared to the United States, have a pretty robust social safety net. You want to know how many homeless people we have in this country? Several million. Several million people in this country are homeless. It's a sobering thought. If you don't make enough money, you end up exactly like one of these guys here. Exactly like one of these guys here. I never wanted to be buried growing up. I said from a very early age, I would like to be cremated because the idea of being put in the ground, even though I didn't think there was an afterlife, seemed too impermanent to me. Hey, somebody was walking here. It seemed too impermanent to me to be put in the ground. I wanted something more final, something that I would be able to say, okay, if my brain, my heart, my organs, the rest of my body are gone, then surely I must be gone. It seems like for so long now, I've been waiting for the big sleep. As far back as I can remember, I wanted to die in some capacity, or at least I desired non-existence. I remember my parents sent me to church when I was around seven, both of whom were atheists. They sent me to church thinking that maybe it would straighten me out. They thought I had issues with aggression. They thought the fear of God would make me behave. But I end up being told in my first Bible lesson that heaven is a place where people who do good go when they die to live forever. And right then and there, I thought, fuck, living forever, if it's anything like what I got going on now, Sounds kind of like going to hell. So what's the difference? Why should I do anything good? If I'm just going to go to hell either way. If living here on earth is hell. If I'm in a living hell. And from there on, it stopped mattering to me whether or not God exists. Because every day of my life, it feels like I'm living in hell. Not a day goes by where I wake up and I don't think, man, wouldn't it be better 
to have never existed? Wouldn't it be better to not have entered this life with conscious thoughts? To not have to wake up every morning and be reminded of my own thoughts and the existence of others? And then you have to go to work. What do you go to work for? Eight hours a day, 12 bucks an hour, for all of it to go away on $4 a gallon of gas just so you can drive to that very place to start going to work again? What's it all for? Why the fuck are any of us here? It's not here to be happy. I don't know about you, but I don't see very many people who are happy. I see a lot of people who are in a place like this. I look at a place like this and I fucking wish I was in a place like this. Not above ground, but under. What do you do? Work for a living? They call it work for a living, but what are you living for? I'm not living for this shit. What, live until I get to be with these guys? I mean, I'm talking about it like it's bad, but I mean, honestly, I can't wait. I can't wait until I'm sitting here with these guys. Just put my ashes in the fucking ground. Don't put me in a casket. Don't have me set up with flowers in one of those fucking wooden prisons for my soul to sit in purgatory. Burn me to ash. Make sure that when I go, it's completely fucking dark. Nothing but this shit. You know, the worst thing I see... You know, it, it's actually, it's actually kind of heartwarming in a way. Shit like this. The wife and the husband buried next to each other. Now, see, wouldn't... Wouldn't something like that be nice to have? Someone who's loyal to you, stays with you forever. Someone you can rely on. Who you can wake up next to in the morning every day and go, Hey, this world has gone to shit. Maybe it's always been shit. But I got that right there going for me. Beautiful woman or man, whichever you prefer. Something in between, perhaps that you can reliably say isn't going to be gone the next morning until, you know, we're all gone. These days, it seems like something like that doesn't really exist anymore. These days, it seems like relationships are but another commodity that we swipe left or right on as we see fit before consuming the next one. There's no love that lasts to the grave like that anymore. No one you can truly rely on, count on, trust for love that goes to the grave like that anymore. One of the very few things in this life that makes staying on this fucking evil planet worth it. How can you laugh with someone if you're always thinking about when they're going to be gone? I mean, I remember when I had someone who told me that they were going to be there for a long time, that they'd be loyal and respect me. And of course I knew it was a farce, given the age of the person. We're at that age where change is particularly volatile and you can never really predict who someone's going to become. But that's also the volatility of relationships in general. Not just now, but in this past time that I idealized so much when there was a bit more loyalty. So, of course, it, it ended in flames as per usual, but, but there was the hope to have something like that. And that hope kept me from having as many thoughts as I could have about when they were going to go. But it was still always on my mind. 
I couldn't fully enjoy the moments that I had with them because it was always, when are they going to leave? When are they going to leave? I mean, even before I had them, I was thinking, when am I going to get them? When am I going to get them? How am I going to get them? Before I got them, it was about how they weren't there. When I got them, it's about when they're going to be gone. And after they're gone, it's about, well, how they're gone. Uh, they hate me now. It doesn't even feel like they're there in the world. It feels like they're hanging around with these guys on these here gravestones under the ground. But I know he's alive. And unfortunately, I know I'm alive as well. Alone. Destined to be probably for the rest of my life. Because I can play whack-a-mole. I can insert more coins into the hypothetical lottery machine that is the revolving door of relationships. Try my... Try rolling the dice on this one or that one, hoping that this time it'll be the one who's committed, this time it'll be the one that I can take to the grave like many of these fine folks here in this cemetery. But why? Why go through the pain of being disappointed so many times again and again and again just to find that one special snowflake, that one goose egg golden goose I don't know getting flowery here why 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 put myself through that much pain and strife just so I can finally find that one and then be able to rest on my laurels take a sigh of relief and lay back because they're there how do I even know they're there I mean, let's say I hypothetically did find them after all of that loss and disappointment. How do I know that that's the one that's actually going to stay around? I won't ever know. And then the ever-present fear and paranoia can be broken down bit by bit by them just for the potential for them to leave. Let's say I go through multiple partners who attempt to break down that fear of mine, who attempt to be loyal and be there for me. And then they allow me to rest a bit. Bit by bit, they allow me to rest. And then, in an instant, they're gone. How much more am I going to worry when the next disappointment inevitably comes and they try to assuage my paranoias? By the time the real one is there, it'll already be too late. I will have been disappointed too many times. So the only way I see myself ending up is in a place like this alone. Who knows? With the way the prices of gas are, the prices of food, the prices of rent, the way the people in this world are, the fact of existence, the way that mere thoughts are, maybe I'll end up in a place like this sooner rather than later. <laughs>